destructive hybrid fire that sports some incredible offensive potential, with his strengths lying in his ability to chase his opponents down and force them into unfavorable situations. Once Pepino is on the move, there's very few characters that can escape him, and once he gets his hands on you, it won't just be pizza and pasta that's being put into a box. However, while his offensive strength is great, Pepino is a character that will take some getting used to, as he sports many intricacies that will be difficult to get the hang of. On top of that, Pepino lacks any projectile or long-range options, meaning that characters that sport strong spacing tools can lead to some rather spicy matchups. Even if that's the case, those that stick with Pepino and learn all he has to offer will quickly learn that he's not only one of the most dangerous characters in the game, but also one of the most fun. <laughs> Pepino stands as a medium-sized humanoid character, his portly figure being only a bit taller than his fellow portly Italian brother, Wario. While constantly exuding an air of anxiety and existentialism, Pepino's portly figure hides a near-unstoppable blend of speed and aggression, allowing him to blow through anything in his path with the gusto of a man whose livelihood is on the line. However, despite being quite fast, Pepino sports enough defensive strength to stay in the fight for quite a while. But just remember, if you hurt Pepino too many times, you can go straight to hell. It should also be mentioned that, like his original appearance in Pizza Tower, Pepino is being designed to be very active and expressive, with there being a ton of emotional detail put into each and every frame of animation. While it might not reach the absolute insanity of Pizza Tower itself, mainly thanks to the limitations of moving from 2D to 3D animation, I can promise I've done my best to make this moveset truly feel like you're becoming the Pizza Tower. In terms of mobility options, Pepino sports two jumps, along with the ability to wall jump and crawl. As he carries the title of the supersonic Italian middle-aged man, Pepino's character mechanics should come as no surprise to anyone who's even seen footage of Pizza Tower, let alone play it themselves. The crusher of enemies, the bridge to the P-rank, the difference between 30 minutes or it's free, mock mode. With this, the player will be able to hold down the B button in order to have Pepino enter his mock run state. With this run building speed over time before maxing out of that dangerous full body rush after enough speed has been accumulated. To help the player keep track of their speed, a mock mode gauge will be featured next to Pepino's character icon, with its design bearing a striking resemblance to the old speed gauge seen in the Sage demo for Pizza Tower. While in mock mode, the player is capable of performing a variety of abilities that they would also be able to perform if they were normally running, including jumping, attacking, and holding up their shield. Although it should be noted that while you can indeed transition from the ground to the air, Pepino will only gain speed if he's on the ground. Mock mode can start in the air, but it will stay at Pepino's basic run speed until he touches a solid surface, and any speed gained on the ground will be carried over to his aerial mobility. It's a motion so fluid you might think you're actually playing melee. While that's all nice, one of the main draws of mock mode is that Pepino is capable of unleashing normals, both grounded and aerials, with boosted speed and heavily cut down recovery time as long as he maintains speed in his mock mode gauge. With this, Pepino will be able to link together attacks almost like he's playing turbo mode in Protected. But these attacks will deal 20% less damage and knockback to compensate for this fantastic upside. Pepino can also perform his other specials out of mock mode as well, but unlike his normals, these moves will not lose any damage or frames while in mock mode. This can allow for the player to rack up damage incredibly fast when on the offensive, all while also creating unique combos that aren't normally possible. But it should be known that Pepino is vulnerable while running at anything below Mach 2, which is the max speed he'll be able to reach here in Smash. In order to reach Mach 2, the player will need to move forward in Mach mode for 0.85 uninterrupted seconds, meaning that any attacks, jumps, or turning around will stop your speed from rising. Thankfully, there is a bit of breathing room between Mach 1 and Mach 2, meaning that there is a small window of time where the player can release the B button and still remain in Mach 2 as they rush forward. And should your timing be precise enough, you'll be able to run, attack, then go back to running before you lose the Mach 2 buff. This is meant to be very difficult to do though, so don't expect this to be something any and all Pepino players are capable of doing right out of the gate. Also, as previously mentioned, moving at Mach 1 will leave Pepino vulnerable, but moving at Mach 2 will harm opponents if Pepino runs into them, although this can be bypassed by striking him with a disjoint or hitting him in the back. 
It should also be mentioned that Pepino is capable of turning around while in mock mode, and turning around will not take away your speed either. But one thing it will do is leave Pepino vulnerable, and it'll take quite a bit of time to start moving in the opposite direction. This is one of the best ways to punish an overly aggressive Pepino player, as he lacks any kind of hitbox during this turnaround animation. If it wasn't already made clear, this was going to be the hardest aspect of Pepino to learn should you want to master him. And since this requires basically rewriting your muscle memory to constantly hold a button while moving and performing other attacks, it can seem like a Herculean effort for those that have fully adapted to the way that Smash characters normally play. However, once you get past the initial hurdle and open up Mach Mode's potential, you'll find a mechanic so versatile and satisfying that it's almost like you're taking a bite out of your favorite type of pizza. Now that you understand the intricate basis of Pepino's character mechanic, let's now talk about the moves that the player can utilize during said mechanic as we move on to Pepino's normals. While sporting incredible offensive potential, Pepino's normals are fairly straightforward in design, as his attacks mainly consist of punches and kicks that are courtesy of his squat and stretch physique. While these attacks might be simple in nature, Pepino's exaggerated movements and facial animations will make them all the more interesting to watch the player perform. Pepino's neutral combo is Doe Softening Combo, a combination that will have Pepino attack with a hook punch, then another hook punch, and then following up with an endless flurry of punch attacks to rack up damage, all before ending the sequence by launching foes with a double fist smash, his hands greatly growing in size in order to emphasize the power of this attack. Thanks to its relatively quick attack speed and powerful ender, this could potentially secure kills at higher percents. But aside from that, this combo is mainly used to check an opponent's buttons in the neutral when they're trying to rush you down. Pepino's forward tilt is Tab Breaker, a strong spacing option that will have Pepino perform a long reaching kick. Almost like he's kicking a bum that's unwilling to pay his tab out of his pizza joint. This attack's great range is also benefited by the fact that Pepino's foot and calf will support a disjoint, allowing the player to safely trade with incoming attacks while also supporting a pretty strong knockback growth. These aspects, when combined together, create one of Pepino's fastest and most reliable kill confirms once his opponent hits their kill range, and is a generally fantastic move that is perfect for everything except continuing combos. That is, of course, unless you're using it in tandem with mock mode, where it can indeed be used as a combo bridge. Pepino's up tilt is Tower Tosser, a quick yet powerful anti-air option that will have Pepino perform an uppercut punch and knock foes up into the air. Thanks to this move's fantastic speed and recovery time, this is one of the main buns Pepino has that can start or extend combos, but its relatively short range and lack of a disjoint make it a fairly poor anti-air option to compensate. Try mixing this move's speed with mock mode to create some truly devastating offensive pressure, but just be sure you don't overdo it. Pepino's down tilt is Greasy Slide, an advancing attack that will have Pepino slide along the ground, attacking with an extended leg in order to knock foes hit up into the air. Referencing the animation that plays if you hold down the control stick while moving at high speeds, this attack can also be used as a combo starter if you catch your opponent making a mistake. However, thanks to its advancing properties, it is far more risky as you're pushing yourself into your opponent's damage range in order to attack, and if you make contact with an opponent's shield, you'll find yourself ending up in a world of hurt. Thankfully, some of this move's downsides can be alleviated by using mock mode, but opponents with quick buttons will still be able to punish a poorly placed attack. Pepino's dash attack is Greedy Checker, a powerful but short range attack that will have Pepino charge forward a short distance, launching anything in his path as he moves elbow first. Taking a visual reference from one of the many ways Pepino can attack the bosses in Pizza Tower, this is a fairly powerful stock closer should you manage to make contact, with its only real downside being its middling range. And while its recovery speed isn't bad, opponents with quick buttons will still be able to punish you if you make contact with their shield. This is also the only one of Pepino's grounded normals that can't be improved by mock mode, so if you're going to go for it, be sure you actually have a chance to hit your opponent head on. For his getup attacks, Pepino will attack on either side of himself using either punches or kicks, all while performing a shoulder check for his ledge attack. <laughs> While Pepino's attacks feature a lot of cartoonish squash and stretch animations, it's here with his smash attacks that Pepino will push his cartoony physique to the next level, with each attack sporing a ton of exaggeration and over-the-top animations. On top of that, these overly cartoony attacks will be backed by some fantastic kill power and be a striking difference to his rapid-fire normals, so be sure to mix them into your offensive pressure in order to set up huge damage and dangerous frame traps. Pepino's forward smash is Pepperoni Punch, an all-out and over-the-top attack that will have Pepino reel back before punching forward. His arm greatly increased in size as it smashes into the face and or bodily equivalent of anyone foolish enough to stand in front of it. As should be expected from how much Pepino puts into this punch, this move's damage and knockback are some of the highest in his moveset, but that much force doesn't come to a stop that quickly. While its shield damage is strong enough to make it fairly dangerous to block, whipping this move will leave you open for quite a while, and in turn, will make it fairly easy for opponents to exploit your fairly poor disadvantage state. 
While you do have the way to take a bit of a beating, it's best to avoid throwing this out in neutral, especially against opponents using swords. Pepino's up smash is anchors away, another over-the-top attack that will let Pepino perform a huge uppercut punch, his arm becoming well-defined and muscular during the move's active frames to show how much power is being put into this attack. While it might not hit as hard as Pepperoni Punch, this move is a fantastic kill confirmed thanks to its great range and relatively fast startup speed, with its hitbox being tall enough to punch through platforms and stop your opponent from touching the ground. However, while it sports great stats, it should be noted that this move is not disjointed, meaning that poor use of this move can lead to you getting punished if you throw it out at an inopportune time. Finally, Pepino's down smash is Breakdance Backbreaker, the finale of Pepino's over-the-top animations that will have him jump up into the air, all before driving his oversized fist into the ground and causing a wave of energy to emit from the impact. This shockwave will hit on both sides of Pepino simultaneously, allowing the player to catch rolls and use this as an Oki tool, and if the player hits the opponent with the fist directly, they'll take even more damage and knockback than if they're hit by the shockwave alone. All of this makes this move one of Pepino's strongest defensive options, but like his up smash, it also suffers from being a long-range attack that doesn't support a disjoint, so long-range pokes can knock Pepino out of this move if he uses it in an opportune time. While Pepino's grounded pressure is very strong, his aerial options are, by comparison, fairly average, with his jump height and air mobility being around the middle of the roster. Top that off with the fact that Pepino cannot rapid fire his aerials in mock mode and you've got a kit of attacks that are designed more for challenging jump mids and cashing out on the damage of your grounded combos as opposed to starring combos themselves. While that's the case, it's important that you don't ignore these attack options, is not making the most of all Pepino has to offer is like enjoying a pizza with no toppings. Pepino's neutral air is Rigatoni Roller, one of Pepino's safest aerial options that will have him rapidly kick below himself, with his legs moving in the same pattern they do when Pepino is moving at Mach 2. This rapid hitting kick will continue until Pepino touches the ground, which can allow the player to use it as a safe landing option thanks to its quick recovery speed, but this move's main strength is that it's the only one of Pepino's aerials that won't cancel the momentum of Mach mode if he uses it mid-run. What this means is that the player can cancel the end leg of this move into Gatling Pepino's grounded normals if they already have Mach 2 built up before jumping. Otherwise, the most the player will get out of this attack is a potential grounded follow-up at low to mid percents. Damage is still damage, however, and if that damage comes with a fairly safe landing option, it's still more than worth the time to use. Pepino's forward air is Pastrami Pounder, a more powerful aerial option that will have Pepino thrust one of his legs forward. His shoe morphing into that of a boot as it increases in size and smashes into the closest foe in order to launch them away. This move sports some pretty great launch power, and to add on to its offensive strength, Pepino's boot counts as a disjoint, allowing it to win trades and secure kills against overaggressive foes. However, while disjointed, this move's range is only okay, as Pepino's stubby legs aren't that long, but I can assure you that the kill power it packs is more than enough to make up for this shortcoming. Pepino's up air is Salami Slapper, another fairly powerful aerial option that will have Pepino perform a wide overhead slap, with his enlarged hand setting opponents flying with a meaty whack, minus the chuckle. In comparison to his other aerials, this move is a solid anti-air option and a great way to confirm kills off the top of the screen, but while its range is pretty great, it's not disjointed, meaning that it can potentially lose trades if you're jumping at a character with a sword. While that's the case, its speed can still allow you to bypass this weakness if you're careful, so if your positioning is good, by all means, don't be afraid to throw hands. Pepino's back air is Cheesy Check, a short range but powerful aerial option that will have Pepino spin around in midair, all while striking behind himself with a powerful elbow thrust that will greatly exaggerate his features in the process. This is Pepino's most powerful aerial by a notable margin, with it being one of the best ways the player can confirm a kill against an opponent foolish enough to try and jump over your mock run, but its very short range makes it one you're going to need to put yourself at risk in order to perform. Still, the odds are in your favor thanks to its relatively fast startup speed, but just don't try and land with it. Finally, Pepino's down air is Funachuli Flop, with this having Pepino perform a fast falling body slam that will smash through any and all foes in between Pepino and the ground. This attack is based on Pepino's falling slam attack from Pizza Tower, and much like its original appearance, this is a very powerful attack that can be used to secure kills or crush the shield of an unsuspecting opponent should they try to block it. But much like the other fastfall aerials of Smash, this move is very high risk, high reward, meaning that missing this attack can lead to you either getting heavily punished if you land on stage or lose your stock altogether if you use it off stage. Most fastfall aerials in Smash are hit and miss when it comes to whether or not they're worth said risk, but they're all exceptional if your opponent doesn't see them coming. Pepino will reach out and grab onto his opponent using both of his arms, with his pummel having him increase his grip as he grows more visibly agitated with his foe. 
for his throws. Pepino will toss his opponents around like unprepared pizza dough, much like he throws around his enemies in Pizza Tower, with his options including a combo throw, a kill throw, and a couple of strong repositioning tools. Whatever purpose, Pepino has it all and more, but the toppings will cost extra. Pepino's forward throw is Penny Pincher. A more simple throw option will have Pepino send his opponent flying with a powerful kick to their face. His leg greatly elongating as he puts some heavy force into this attack. Despite the cartoony proportions of this move, its damage and knockback are only fairly average, with its main purpose being to reposition opponents and give Pepino just enough space to get a mock run going and potentially start a Gatling combo. This will become notably easier to perform as the opponent's percent goes up, with higher percent throws leading to potential 50-50 guessing games if you position yourself just right. Pepino's up throw is Headstrong Hurl, another simple throw option that will have Pepino launch his opponent skyward by performing a powerful headbutt, his head growing in size on impact to show how much power he put into this move. In terms of launch power, this throw is roughly in the middle of Pepino's options, with it being strong enough to kill at higher percents while being able to lean to either a forward or up air at lower percents. But since most of Pepino's pressure is ground-oriented, one could argue that this is the least useful of his throw options. Still, while situational, it has its uses, and if your opponent least expects it, you might be able to get more out of it than you normally would. Pepino's back throw is Mozzarella Masher, a more powerful throw option that will have Pepino reposition his opponent behind himself all before he sends them flying with a massive slap courtesy of his cartoonish proportions. In terms of launch power, this is Pepino's strongest throw overall, with this throw being able to secure kills at higher percents, all while also having purpose at lower percents as it works the more powerful version of his forward throw. While that's the case, however, Pepino's abundance of stronger kill options will definitely lead to this being a throw that's scarcely used unless it's out of desperation. But since a kill is a kill, you're more than likely not going to hear anyone complaining about it. Finally, Pepino's down throw is Gorgonzola Grand Slam, with this having Pepino leap up into the air before slamming his opponent into the ground head first, burying them from the force and leaving them wide open to further punishment. Much like the other Burry effects in Smash, this will force opponents into mix-ups at lower to mid percents and setup kills at higher percents. And should an opponent tech this move poorly, they could possibly take up to 40-50% to damage on the Pepino player. Thanks to this noble strength and its ability to synergize with Pepino's explosive kit, this is Pepino's strongest throw option by a notable margin and will definitely be the one you're going for 90% of the time you land a grab. However, it does suffer from the same weaknesses of the other Burry attacks in Smash, meaning it's very weak at lower percents and can potentially lead to unexpected punishment if you don't act quickly and follow up right away. So much like pizza fresh out of the oven, it's best to chow down before your quarry goes cold. We've now reached Pepino's Specials, and this is where we'll get a chance to talk about the abilities that make up the backbone of Pepino's aggressive ground-based playstyle. These techniques are less for dealing damage and more for utility, but the damage potential they can open up more than makes them worthy of a 5-star review. Starting with his neutral special, Pepino will make use of his trademark ability that serves as not only the backbone of his character mechanic, but the backbone of his entire playstyle. A tool designed to chase opponents down, wreck up damage, and push your opponents out position and into corners. This is Mock Run. By holding down the B button, Pepino will immediately begin to run the direction he's facing, with his dash and run speed being nobly faster than his regular movement speed and increasing the speed the longer the player holds the B button for. And as previously mentioned, keeping this run animation going for 0.85 uninterrupted seconds while Pepino's speed max out as he enters his Mach 2 state. In this state, all of Pepino's grounded normals can link into each other with little to no end lag at the cost of dealing 20% less damage and knockback, on top of being able to link into his other specials in order to maximize his mix-up potential and rack up damage insanely quickly. However, as strong as it is, Mach Run does have counters, and it's counters that skilled players will quickly learn and the Pepino player will need to understand should they want to master the character. While he will deal damage to all opponents in this path while in Mach 2, Pepino will be fully vulnerable to all attacks from either above or behind him, meaning that opponents that predict the Mach run can counter this by either jumping over and attacking Pepino from above or sidestepping their run and striking him in the back as he runs past. On top of that, Pepino loses his ability to deal damage on contact while turning around, meaning that he can be hit normally by all attacks and punched heavily if caught out of position. In total, Mach Run has a plethora of notable counters that can be used against a Pepino player, so those thinking they'll be able to use this move perfectly day one will definitely have their hubris shattered. However, while Mach Run has all of these weaknesses, a really good Pepino player will be able to work around them and even completely quash them if they know what they're doing. Do you have a jump-happy opponent looking to punish you from above? Jump up into their path and counter their attacks with Mach Run's armor. Opponent tries to sidestep or block with their shield? Drop the run and transition into one of Pepino's other specials to either check counters or punish an opponent trying to preemptively shield with a grab. Is an opponent with a counter challenging you to run at them? Drop the run at the last second and counter with a grab. Mach Run offers the player the potential to be completely unpredictable, and outmaneuvering this attack will be one of the biggest hurdles you'll have to overcome if you want to learn the matchup. Projectiles will definitely help with that, but let it be known that nothing is off the table. 
except Pineapple. Moving on to his side special, Pepino will make use of a deadly command grab that will allow players to capitalize on his aggressive playstyle, catch crucial mistakes in the neutral, and cash out on the damage potential of his Macron. His main offensive tool in Pizza Tower, this is Grab Dash. With this, Pepino will take a second to strike a pose before rushing forward at incredible speed. His face drenched in anger as both of his arms are extended in front of himself. If an opponent gets in between Pepino and the end of his dash path, he will sweep his opponent up in his iron grip before flying up into the air with them in tow. After a brief moment of aerial suspension, Pepino will then fall back towards the ground at incredible speed, all before smashing his opponent into the floor face first courtesy of his spinning pile driver. This move is a reference to one of Pepino's grab attacks on Pizza Tower, with the player being able to perform a spinning pile driver should they hold up on the control stick while performing a grab dash. This is super useful on stages with really tall vertical areas, allowing the player to potentially pile drive their opponent from hundreds of feet in the air. And here in Smash, it stands as one of Pepino's strongest kill confirms and a great way to close out stocks against foes who underestimate your mock run capabilities. While the player can utilize Mach Run to make Grab Dash far harder to react to, doing so will greatly increase its recovery time, making it far more unsafe if it whiffs in exchange for being much harder to dodge. On top of that, Pepino cannot follow up a Gatling combo with Grab Dash. He can only do it from a regular Mach Run state, so don't think you'll be able to immediately kill off of a 40-50% combo. This move can even grab opponents in midair, and thanks to the horizontal rings that Pepino covers, the player can even use this as an alternative recovery option should they be close enough to the ledge. Also, for those wondering, yes, much like the command grabs of characters like Bowser and Gandorf, you can plummet to your death if you use this move offstage, allowing you to perform what I have endearingly called a pizza side. Moving on to his recovery special, Pepino will utilize an ability from Pizza Tower that will allow him to reach the highest points of a level and effectively make it back to the stage. The Super Leap. With this, Pepino will scrunch his body down as he builds up energy, and after a brief charge animation, Pepino will rocket straight up into the air at incredible speed, with this move covering a massive vertical range and dealing damage to all opponents in Pepino's travel path. One could see this as a cross between Fox's Firefox and Wario's Corkscrew, and to add on to this move's great recovery range, Pepino will not go into a helpless state once he reaches the end of this move's travel path which references the way that there's very few things in Pizza Tower that take control away from the player. It's a fantastic recovery option thanks to this, but it should be known that this move's recovery range is purely vertical, meaning that using this too far away from the ledge can potentially lead to you plummeting to your death as Pepino cannot perform any other special moves until he touches the ground. On top of that, this move isn't disjointed, meaning that it can be potentially too firm to punish by opponents edge guarding him, with moves like Spikes being able to instantly counter this attack and send him back to the blast zone below. As a result, it might be safer to recover high using Grab Dash, because that move is notably harder to counter, but it should be known that the grounded version of this move is a fairly strong out of shield option. Finally, for his down special, Pepino will make use of a versatile counterattack that will allow him to heavily punch over aggression and turn his owner's quote unquote hard work against them. A move that's as stylish as it is useful, Parry Taunt. With this, tapping down B will have Pepino strike a series of poses, with the pose you get changing with each use of this move and essentially granting the player a huge variety of ways to drive their opponents up the wall with anger. However, should the player time this taunt with an incoming attack, be it a physical or projectile one, Pepino will parry the incoming attack while striking a second pose, all while an audio cue plays to signal a successful parry. Ah! While this move works like a counter at face value, this move does not support any sort of counter attack or self buff on hit, but will instead inflict the parry opponent with unique debuffs depending on whether or not the player parries a physical or projectile attack. If Pepino parries a physical attack, the ending leg of the move he parries will be tripled in length, meaning that a move that normally has 15 frames of end leg will instead take 45 frames to recover from, leaving them wide open to punish him from the Pepino player. It's almost like you hit them with the physical embodiment of the suckish feeling one might feel after consuming pizza. If Pepino were to parry a projectile, however, he will lost the projectile back in the direction it came from, only at roughly 50% of its original movement speed. Because of this, the projectile's screen duration will be greatly increased and allow the Pepino player to shut up parts of the stage for a notable amount of time. And for characters that can only have one of said type of projectiles on screen at any given time, it can potentially lock some characters out of their main range tools. This parry projectile will also count as Pepino's attack as well, so opponents who touch it will be hurt for the same damage it would have done had it hit Pepino normally. Next is the final smash, and for this, Pepino will reach his breaking point. Smash is such a stressful game, from how much you need to learn, to how hard you have to work, to how bad the funny block man is, it's all enough to make a man crack. And upon his breaking, Pepino will hold nothing back as a means of saving that which he holds dear. This is the death that you deserve, Ioli. With this, Pepino will let out an echoing scream before rushing forward and clashing with the first opponent in his path. And once he makes contact, Pepino will begin to unleash a series of over-the-top and cartoonish attacks, racking up damage to the two ascend higher up into the sky. 
Once the two have moved past the top of the screen, a small cinematic will play out the end of the final smash as Pepino will grab his opponent by the head, all before beginning to fall back towards the ground at incredible speed. Leaving a flaming trail behind them as they fall back to the stage, one final close-up will be shown of Pepino and his caught opponent before he drives them into the floor with enormous force. With this explosive pile driver being enough to instantly kill any foe over 100% damage and heavily damage any other players who are foolish enough to stand underneath it. This is, of course, a reference to the way that Peppino puts an end to Pizza Face during the final boss of Pizza Tower, but the major difference between each version of this attack being that we actually get to see the impact here in Smash. <laughs> Victory theme, Pepino will use the same tune that plays whenever you defeat a boss in Pizza Tower. This simple jingle follows the same motifs as it's Pizza Time, and since it's the most iconic song from the game, it only makes sense that it also gets turned into the character's victory theme. <laughs> Victory animation number one will have Pepino spin around and cheer for himself, all before catching a massive key as it falls from the sky. This is the same animation that plays when you defeat a boss in Pizza Tower, and thanks to the fact that the jingle from said animation is also Pepino's victory theme, one could say this animation goes perfectly with the music. Victory animation number two will show Pepino off in the distance, all before the camera rapidly zooms in on him. At this point, Pepino will whip around and give a thumbs up animation, a smile adorning his face as he says, very nice. This is a reference to one of the victory poses the player can acquire in Pizza Tower, with this being the victory pose for A rank. Should you win by a huge deficit, however, this victory animation will change to a unique animation that will have Pepino pose with the camera before it zooms back out a large P appearing in the background as Pepino strikes a stylish pose. This is a reference to the animation that plays when you get a P rank in Pizza Tower, and only the most dedicated will even have a chance of seeing this animation once, let alone on every level in the game. Finally, victory animation number 3 will show Pepino surrounded by the Toppins, the main collectibles of Pizza Tower. After a brief moment of taking in his victory, Pepino and the Toppins will perform a super taunt and pose for the camera, with Pepino continuing to perform various parry taunt poses until the player cycles back to the character select screen. Taunt number one will have Pepino bite on his forearm in an anxious manner, grinding it between his teeth before looking at the camera. Realizing he's being watched, he'll pull his forearm out of his mouth and flash a nervous smile. This is a reference to one of Pepino's idol animations from Pizza Tower, with this animation accentuating his anxious nature. Taunt number two will reference another idol animation from Pizza Tower, with Pepino pulling out a cane and dancing a small jig. This is a rare animation that can play should the player stand still long enough, but chances are high you're never going to see it unless you're intentionally not playing the game. Finally, Taunt number three will have Pepino… well, he'll scream at the top of his lungs. While there are a ton of unique taunt animations to use here, I felt that using Pepino's hilarious Mel Blanc sampled scream would be right in line with the character. Whether he's screaming in horror, screaming in anger, or simply screaming to scream is up to you to decide. Pepino's colors will make reference to the many outfits the player can unlock in Pizza Tower, with there being a total of four solid colors and four pattern colors. Regardless of which color you wear, you'll still look middle-aged, so don't sweat the details. Color number one is Pepino's standard appearance, with Pepino wearing his white chef's hat and sleeveless shirt along with a black t-shirt, black pants, and black shoes. Like in Pizza Tower, only the non-black parts of Pepino's attire will change between color options. Color number two will turn Pepino's hat and shirt a bright blue, with this color being dubbed Sage Blue in-game. The player can acquire this color in Pizza Tower by completing all four levels of the first floor in less than an hour. Color number three will turn Pepino's hat and shirt a force green, with this color being dubbed Money Green. In game, the player will have to find all toppings on the first two floors in order to unlock this color. Color number four will turn Pepino's hat and shirt a crimson red, which is fittingly dubbed Blood Red by the game. This color is unlocked by defeating a certain amount of enemies during your playthrough, and whether you want to consider this outfit naturally red or it was white when Pepino first bought it is up for you to decide. Color number five will swap to the patterns outfits by giving Pepino's standard white outfit a set of red polka dots, this color being dubbed Funny Polka. In order to unlock this color, the player must end a combo once they reach the Funny ranking, which is between 70 and 74 enemies killed in a row. Color number six will give Pepino's outfit a dark blue coloring with a skull pattern overlaid on top, with this color being titled Bad Bones. 
In order to unlock this color, the player must get her to total of 50 times. So chances are high that this is going to be one of the first colors you unlock. Color number 7 will change Pepino's outfit to a force green, but if you look closely, it's actually a pattern themed after a pitfall trap. Dubbed War Camo by the game, the player can unlock this color by beating War, the hardest level in the game, on their first try. And as a result, it is one of the most difficult colors to unlock if you go into the level blind. For those of you like myself that managed to unlock this color on your one and only attempt, I salute you. Finally, color number 8 will change Pepino's outfit to a pizza theme, this cheese yellow and pepperoni red spotted color being fittingly dubbed Pizza Man by the game. In order to unlock this color, the player must beat the game once. So for non-completionists out there, this might be the last color you ever unlock. If it wasn't already apparent thanks to how soon I'm covering this character after the release of his game, Pizza Tower is absolutely fantastic on pretty much every level. While I may have not kept this up to date on its development cycle as a lot of other folks have, I was incredibly excited to finally play this game when I found out it released, which, ironically enough, was the day it came out. From the first time I was given control of Pepino, I was head over heels in love with this game. With every frame of animation being lovingly crafted over incredibly tight controls, fantastic level design, and an overabundance of personality. Top that off with one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard and you have my game of the year so far. And I don't see any game coming along and knocking it out of said position. As for Pepino as a fighter, I feel it's something that needs to happen. And surprisingly, it kind of already has. No, I'm not talking about frame makers dropping the ball. I'm talking about the officially developed Pepino mod for Rivals of Aether featuring sprites created by the Pizza Tower devs. It truly felt like a dream come true to have one of my new favorite platformer characters in my favorite platform fighter. And who knows, maybe it doesn't even need to end here. What about a potential guest appearance in the upcoming Rivals 2? The sky is the limit for Pepino, and whatever happens, I'm all here for it. If you haven't played Pizza Tower, I can't recommend it enough, and I hope you enjoyed this moveset as much as I did making it. If you like what you saw, be sure to like and comment, as it not only helps with the algorithm, but also gives me a much needed boost in morale. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to jump right into the other movesets I've made, follow the link in the description to go to my Challenger concept playlist. Just be sure to press that little bell icon, as doing so will leave you assured that you'll never miss a future upload. For now, I've been Felicia Fan, and I hope you have a good one.